My question is to the Honorable Minister for Infrastructure and Transport. And the question is, can the Minister briefly explain to the members of this House the transformation of the government shipping services fleet and its contribution to economic development and capacity building in the mar and maritime safety? Thank you, Madam Speaker. <clears throat> and I thank the Honorable Whip for his question. And uh, the question um, requires for me to explain the transformation of the government shipping service fleet and as such its contribution to economic development and capacity building in the, mar in the maritime uh, zone, particularly in the area of maritime safety. But in 2010, Cabinet uh, took a decision to replace what was uh, an aging fleet for the government shipping service. At the time, the fleet uh, included um, vessels like Tandao Soko, Tamsoro, Tobuto, uh, the Tokelau, the Tag, Tini, and the Ngolea. These are but some of the ships that was in the shipping service of government and were in no capacity or did not have a seaworthy certification to go out because they were quite aged. And through that decision, Madam Speaker, additional ships were added to the fleet. Uh, and to mention a few, uh, the Rongawoka in 2011, which uh, <clears throat> was bought as a second-hand ship, the Tag Rendonu. And more lately, Madam Speaker, the, um, the ships Singapore, uh, which is uh, a budge, so also uh, Wunilangi. In addition, uh, as I had alluded to earlier in one of my statements to this Honorable House, there is a ship that is currently under construction in, in Malaysia, in Mary Malaysia, which is, has a row row capacity and enough to carry 90 passengers. And it weighs uh, 120 tonne, also of cargo carrying capacity. The two new ships that were bought recently are now currently the workhorses, uh, so to speak, of the government shipping service. And they have been very, very useful to us in meeting the needs of the maritime zone, particularly in water and in emergency relief. They have also come to the aid of the franchise ships that uh, have been destined to sail to uneconomical routes, but these are primarily the functions of the, of the boats that are under that franchise. But in the event that there is a need uh, for these government ships to, to take up uh, or to do an emergency run to the islands uh, in response to a particular need, they will go uh, also then in assistance to, uh, uh, to the franchise which is already operating at the moment. And uh, <clears throat> at the moment we have uh, uh, seven ships in the government shipping services fleet and uh, we, we try as much to keep these ships uh, in the capacity that's ready to be able to respond to the need of the community out there in the outer islands, particularly in the, uh, in the provision of emer uh, emergency supply, emergency water, which has been uh, the, the primary service and functions of these boats that we have at the moment, but also for economical activities uh, when the need arises and if they need to take uh, staff from the island to come back to Suva. Therefore, the, the government uh, shipping services in the fleet that it has comprises, uh, makes up a very, very critical capability for people, particularly that live on the island. In addition to that, um, I know that it's not only the ships that make the service, because the capacity here in Suva, particularly at the government shipping wharf, needs also to be developed to make sure that our outgoing passengers not only using government shipping, but also uh, with the franchise are given you know, e adequate protection, uh, not only for themselves, but also for their goods while they are waiting for the boat. In addition to that, the aids to navigation that we are putting up in the waters 
uh, in, 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 you know, in, in within our, our, our territorial waters here in Fiji, help us to navigate safely within these boats and uh, with these boats and also the capacity out there on the island. I know we, before we broke off for Christmas, uh, Madam Speaker, there was this very big debate uh, about uh, the jet in Vunombalabu. Now that is operational uh, in, in, in the state that it is and we are working closely. But that is to say a commitment to be able to allow the GSS to provide the services for our people and we, uh, we know that they are important and they are very, very critical for the people who live in the law group <clears throat> in the Asawas, uh, and the top end of Onolebu, also in the Lombayviti group and also in Kandabu. So I, in, in, in that light, I, I would like to reiterate that they are a very critical component of our work and we make sure that they remain in that role for as long as they can be. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Madam Speaker, question, you have the floor. I thank the Minister for his uh, ex explanation on the transformation of the government uh, shipping services. Uh, I would like to thank the government for providing employment for the crews of these uh, ships and the skills uh, training that uh, they receive, including on the job training. Just my question to the Honorable um, Minister. Madam Speaker, is that um, with the government uh, shipping services, one of the boats that uh, used to serve the maritime provinces uh, very well was the Kaunitoni because it was purpose uh, built for providing uh, services for the maritime uh, provinces. In that it was uh, built to provide passenger provisions for their comfort and uh, safety, and also adequate loading and uh, capacity for cargo. There was also proper uh, refri refrigeration provisions for the marine resources that were brought from the islands. Uh, I'm wondering, uh, Honorable Speaker, if the uh, minister is, um, is also thinking and planning for a ship such as that to be provided because it is purpose built for these uh, islands, uh, Madam Speaker. And also the other uh, point that I would bring, like to bring to the Honorable uh, Minister is for the rural roads on these islands uh, in order to properly provide for the uh, people that uh, use these uh, ships. The rural roads, uh, Madam Speaker, that I was asked to bring to his attention was uh, the roads on uh, Lakemba, Moala, Vivia, and Wunombalabu, so that there's proper transportation of the fish and other marine uh, resources and commodities that would be uh, brought to Suva on, uh, on these boats in terms of the economic uh, development for the people in the islands. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I thank the Honourable Leader of the Opposition for her supplementary question, um, where she made reference to the MB Kaunitoni. My information that MB Kaunitoni uh, was decommissioned uh, some time back, and I think the point is uh, she's commenting on the capability of the boat. My information is that uh, the MV Ililobatu and uh, Rongovoka provide that capacity at present. And I'm also um, uh, happy to note that this new ship that we are acquiring, which should be uh, with us um, around July, August this year, will definitely have a capacity to be able to offer those services in terms of comfort and uh, refrigeration for the goods that uh, people of our islands want to bring to Suva. With regards to the rural roads that uh, has been raised also, uh, when speaker, I note those areas and 
I think my statement later on uh, today will cover some of those aspects, and then and I'll be happy to make some responses with regards to the islands where the concerns were raised. Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> Supplementary question. Madam Speaker, I'm concerned by an answer by the Honourable Minister that uh, in reference to some of the older ships, uh, he said that uh, some of those were, did not have seaworthy uh, certification. Could he name which particular ships were those and why they were being kept, maintained and used when there was no seaworthy certificates? Thank you. Honourable Minister. Madam Speaker, I, I, I remember <coughs> making the statement that the ships were not seaworthy, not properly certified. But I don't think in any event that I said that the ships were sailing when they were not properly certified. When I made those statements, and I mentioned the ships such as Ndausoko, Tamusoro, Tabuto, Matokalau, Taktini, and Molea, all these ships have now are no longer sailing. And, and I also noted that for the age of them, because it's an aging fleet, we no longer sail them. At the moment, we only have seven ships that are operating, and uh, they are Ilelobatu and Rongoboka, the Singabo, Unilangi, Watulawa, Rendon, which is a tug, and Dautukituki, which is a beacon piling budge. So um, I just want to reassure this Honorable House and reassure the Honorable Member we do not sail ships that are not seaworthy. And uh, the reason why we took them off the list was because they were aged and they were not properly certified. And they've been just quite really old boats. Thank you. Madam, Madam Speaker, in terms of economic development and capacity building, within the inter-islands, uh, Madam Speaker, there's a lot of um, travel between villages from the main wharf or main jetty like Wunisea or Viwa, uh, wire connecting to Viwa. They use a lot of the small fiber boats that are powered by outboard motors. The cost, Madam Speaker, is very high to acquire a boat, an outboard, mo outboard motor, given the, the small economies of those villages. Would it, be, would it be in the scheme of things for governments to help reduce the cost of the outboard motors? and the fiber boats that are so critical in linking up the villages from the, from the main services. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Mr. Speaker, I'm surprised no one is objecting to that question on the line of relevance in terms of the, of the primary question, but nevertheless, I will, I will attempt to answer that anyway. Uh, I, I suppose I can say is that is something that I would raise as part of this, uh, part of the request, but uh, at the moment um, the, um, the, there are already, this, this is a matter for the companies that deal with this. Uh, 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 no, not, not, not really. Um, so. Something that definitely can be raised uh, in the future, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Uh, Madam Speaker, I'd like to take the opportunity to acknowledge the quick action by government uh, through the Honorable Minister for attending to the, to the Lama Lama JT. However, Madam Speaker, given that most smaller islands are without jetties. Can the Honorable Minister explain what measures are in place to ensure operational safety for both the, the franchise operators and the passengers? Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Speaker, the Maritime Safety Authority of Fiji is the relevant authority that regulates maritime safety. 
and as such there are procedures that are in place to make sure that the ships are compliant when it comes to the safety of the traveling public that use the boat to travel. Um, the Fiji Roads Authority is the appropriate authority that deals with the, the safety and uh, of uh, the jetties that are out there on the outer islands. I, I know for sure that the Maritime Safety Authority works very hard to make sure that, that these ships are compliant to make sure that people travel safely, given we are all very well concerned about the safety of our people when they are at, 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 the, at sea, particularly with the, the recent inclement weather. With regards to the jetties and the other areas, um, we have a schedule of, um, of work that goes out to the other island. We have started with some. We are progressively reaching out to other islands to make sure that uh, their jetties are at least safe for boats to berth, and then subsequently be able in the future to be able to make it better so that it is safe for these ships to berth and the people to get on and off safely for that matter. So uh, it is something that we've got uh, you know, uh, on our charts and uh, we, we hope we can get there sooner rather than later, but sometimes constraints of resources dictates that we have to set up priorities in these areas. Thank you. Thank you.